Hi, I'm M4. How is everybody tonight? You guys enjoying the show? <laughs> All right. So uh, to keep this uh, to keep this as short as possible, uh, I'm M4. Uh, my couch can introduce themselves uh, during prologue. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead. And <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and count down uh, from five for the start, unless the crowd wants to do it, of course. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, your turn. <laughs> All right, uh, I am Lopez. I run the glitches category of this game. I do a little bit of uh, any for sudden no ace, but my main experience with this is uh, glitchless. I started playing in 2019, so I've played quite a bit. I'm excited for the run. Yeah, I'm Phantom, probably mostly known for rando, but I did start with glitchless originally. Yeah, and I'm Morpheus. I grinded this category before any of the new tricks were found recently, so we'll be able to explain a lot of what's going on later on in about 40-ish minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot to show and a lot to demo, but first we have to get to it. Uh, yeah. After we get to a certain point, it's going to look like the things I'm doing are kind of like arbitrary and weird, but there's, there's, a, uh, there's a method to it, I promise. But anyway, before that, 20 minutes of prologue. <laughs> True. So the, the beginning of this game is a little notoriously slow. Um, if, the, if the host would like to at any point interject with donations, except for a couple of specific spots, uh, they can go ahead and feel free to do so. Well, all right, I'll take that as an invitation to do that. We got a $10 donation here from Anonymous that says, yes, yeah, chef. <laughs> we also got a $25 donation here from Duke that says, Mix4, I'm still so hyped you made it to GDQ. You've been working on Paper Mario for so long, you're going to do incredible, best of luck. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, dude. And on a very different note, we have a $25 donation here from Discount Cleric that says, what's the best board game to play in the kitchen? Chess Chef. Chess <laughs> Chef. <laughs> I like that. That was a good one. <laughs> anyway, uh, that, covered, uh, that covered about 30 seconds. We've got, uh, I don't know, like 18 more minutes to go <laughs> before we start doing anything like super strange. Um, so the story of this game, as I'm sure most people know by now, this, this game is very popular among people our age. Uh, it's, uh, it's an RPG that came out in 2000, uh, and Bowser obtains the Star Rod, which uh, you see that in the opening, but we skipped that because, you know, speedrun. Um, so he got the Star Rod, which gives him the power to grant any wish he wants, and he his in immediate first wish is to wish his castle underneath Peaches and then lift both of them into the sky. <laughs> Bowser's a little extra, but we love him for it here. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this fight here is basically just teaching you that you can jump, and that's about it. Yeah, you're not allowed to do anything else. You've probably noticed the text scrolling pretty quickly already. Pretty much the main way of text mashing in this game is just holding the B button. It's the fastest way to do it, even if you try mashing the A and B buttons together. Some more speed tech here, you're going to see M4 mash the A button here. So mashing the A button in Prologue lets you do a quick jump. And what that does is when Mario uses the jump command, he does a little squat, a little crouch animation there. And if you press A as soon as he does it, you can skip that and save up to 10 frames on each time you jump. Quick jumps are a huge way to tell like how how new a speedrunner to this game is. I mean, uh, Morpheus back here didn't even do them until he already had like a sub 350 time. And uh, that, that was honestly an incredible feat. I don't know how he did that because it saves, uh, <laughs> you save probably upwards of 30 seconds in a glitchless run with, uh, with quick jumping, so. Yeah, I didn't know and the very next PB that I got was over a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Just from that and maybe some better movement slightly. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Anyway, uh, Bowser's uh, Bowser's looking pretty tough today. Uh, one of my favorite things about the intro of this game is uh, <laughs> after I think the first time you hit him when his shield's up, he asks Mario uh, if he's been taking his vitamins lately. Just <laughs> Are you, have you been taking your vitamins? That didn't hurt at all. The writing in this game is just so charming. <laughs> they really flushed Bowser out to be just this very sarcastic, funny guy. <laughs> but he gets down to business when he has to. I would say that Super Mario RPG was kind of the start of that, but Paper Mario really expanded on it. Yeah. <laughs> He's very sarcastic and childish to a, to a fault. 
Uh, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't plan the. Uh, he doesn't plan the best, you know, because he doesn't guard the star spirits himself when he's invincible. But he, uh, you know, maybe he just trusts his henchmen that much. He's a nice guy, really. <laughs> I mean, when you have the power to wish for anything, wouldn't you? I would wish for more copies of myself to guard the star spirits. <laughs> <laughs> but Bowser did not think of that, which is good because if he did, then we wouldn't really have a run. Anyway, the backup for losing to Bowser there is about an hour and a half long. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll see. I know later. it's late. I know it's late, but uh, we're going to have to do quite a lot to make up for that loss there. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this cutscene is, what, another minute and a half before we can move again? Yep. <laughs> Uh, I'll, be, I'll be able to move again at roughly the six and a half minute mark. So if the host has any more donations, feel free. You betcha. I got plenty. We got a $256 donation here from Moradin that says, It's a me, Luigi. <laughs> And uh, as a reminder for everybody, we are still raising money for the Paper Mario Glitch Exhibition. We are just under $9,000 away from getting that met. We are uh, just about to cross the $11,000 mark, but we're not quite there yet. Still got to get $9,000, just a little bit more than that, uh, to get that Glitch Exhibition met. So please get your donations in. We also got a $50 donation here from Unky Russ that says, Greetings from all of us watching in Humboldt from Kim, Pat, and Russ. Kim's my sister. Uh, she's, uh, she's lovely. I used to listen to her music uh, while doing attempts of this game a long time ago. <laughs> Back before the mods got mad at me for uh, <laughs> listening to music during my runs, it made it harder to verify, so I stopped doing that a while ago. But my sister, she's a very, very lovely woman. <laughs> you got time for a few more? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. There's about a, I'm about to start moving, but there's... Uh, there's some more downtime before the first trick. Sure. We got a $10 donation here from Kay that says, This is me and my sister's first GDQ. So excited to donate during the Paper Mario run. Our favorite game since we were kids. Good luck to Mix 4 and would love to see those glitches. Oh, they've got one coming up in about a minute or so. What do you guys say? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's coming up now. Just about, yeah. Pretty big, pretty big glitch. <laughs> It's a pretty big deal, and it's also very, very difficult. Uh, it's a notorious run killer. Uh, it will not be killing any marathon runs, of course, because we're just going to muscle through it, but uh, I will need to concentrate, so I'm going to let my commentators explain when we get to that part. Anyway, uh, so Cammy, she comes down here. She has a hunch, a hunch that Mario survived that fall from uh, re-entry. <laughs> and uh, for some reason, she's right. So she decides to block our path by crushing that gate with a giant block, uh, the likes of which Mario has surely never seen before. Surely. He just really? fixed that gate. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> yeah, Goompapa's pretty upset about that, for sure. Fixing a gate with no hands, I'd be mad too. <laughs> <laughs> He's very talented. <laughs> anyway, the veranda's gone. Uh, <laughs> Oops. We were just out here, but uh, the shockwave from that block hitting the ground uh, broke it. So uh, Goompa fell all the way down here, and now so does Mario. Uh, he floats down like a feather, very charming. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and uh, be quiet now because I have to do uh, junior skip, so I'm going to let, let my couch take care of that one. Yeah, more if I think uh, you've done this more than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what we're going to be doing is something called loading zone storage. And what that entails is storing this loading zone with frame perfect jumps while basically those inputs being jump and the analog stick on the same frame. And if you can manage to get yourself all the way over to the bush where the hammer is, you can activate the cutscene to get it just like that. And that'll trigger the loading zone. Perfect. And now we have the hammer. Very now, nice. Now we don't have to fight Junior Troopa. Yeah, that saves about 45, 50 seconds. Something like that. So even with a even with a fail right there, we still saved probably over 30. Well over 30, I'd say. Yeah, close to 40-ish. Yeah, and that causes its own problems, even though it does save time. We do have to make up that experience later on because we did skip fighting Junior Troopa. Yeah, Junior's a lot of experience this early. It's what, 20 experience? Yeah, yeah 20, 20, 20 experience. And that goes uh, quite a long way in this category. We get to the end pretty underleveled, so we need to make up for that and make sure we have enough stats to defeat Bowser. 
Yep, so uh, right here, uh, I'm sure everybody knows this, but uh, we're going to get our first partner. Uh, his name is Gumbario. He's that cute looking kid in the blue hat right there. Uh, he looks up to Mario and wants to join him on his adventures to uh, save Princess Peach. And uh, we're also going to get introduced to the badge mechanic, the tutorial of which, you know, of course we're gonna skip it, but he just, this, these prompts are just asking, are you sure you don't wanna learn how to equip badges? It would really help you out. <laughs> So here's our boy. Uh, his ability is completely useless in this speedrun, but uh, his combat abilities are not useless. So we will be seeing plenty of use of him uh, late in the run, surprisingly. And we're gonna equip Power Jump right now. That's the badge that Goompa gave us. It is one of the strongest badges in the game as far as your resource to uh, damage ratio goes. So we will be making rather extensive use of that throughout the run, especially considering how weak we are. Yeah, so right now we're going through Goomba Road. These rooms are a lot trickier than they look. It was really well done by MX4. Somewhat deceptively, they are commonly considered the hardest rooms in the game yep. uh, for new players. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the first real battle we've got here with the Goomba Bros. Basically, we're going to try and get them down to equal health with Power Jump. That does three damage. And once that's done, we'll be finishing them off together with a Fire Flower that we picked up earlier in the run. Yep. The blue Goomba has six HP, the red one has seven, so Goombaro gets to attack once. Yep. Uh, that one damage actually ends up being very important, because uh, otherwise we wouldn't be able to wipe them out on the same turn. Uh, if you do not do that, if you knock out one before the other, uh, the, the one who is still in the battle is going to start crying and complaining that you knocked out his brother. So we just, uh, we don't want to deal with that, so we take care of both of them at the same time. Yeah, generally speaking, we try to end battles on pretty much destroying every enemy on the same turn, or at least with the same attack. So that's a Goom Nut. I just picked it up uh, because it is slightly faster to collect and eat that than it is to go back to the heart block to refill your stats after that fight. Now this place looks very big and intimidating, but the guys inside are, uh, they're kind of pushovers, but they're cute. <laughs> All the enemies in this game, uh, the bosses especially, are very charming. So uh, this this guy that we're about to about to see is the Goomba King. His uh, castle is also a bridge, uh, and it connects uh, the Goomba area to the rest of the overworld. So we need to get past him in order to get to Toad Town. But this this guy's this guy's silly. I love him. <laughs> look at his look at his striped pants. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I would wear those pants. <laughs> anyway, he has two different attacks he can do. It doesn't matter which one he does. One of them is eight frames faster than the other. Something worth noting about this fight is how you can interact with the environment in the back like this with Gambario. Yep. There's very few exceptions that have this kind of thing in a battle, but they generally don't matter as much. We got the slow attack. <laughs> Eight frames slower. It doesn't matter. Uh, like even even when uh, in a uh, even in prologue, which is tends to be a very consistent low RNG split, you generally can't look at somebody's split time and tell if they got if they got the fast attack or not. It's it's really such a small little thing. It's annoying if you're already on a slow run, but it, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Nice. Ooh, so, that was, <laughs> so that was another trick, uh, not really one <laughs> worth worrying about. You can uh, you can shake that bush before going down onto the bottom ledge. Uh, there's a very specific spot where you can do that. It saves a few frames if you do, like maybe 0.2 or something. Uh, anyway, I love this cutscene because the Goomba King asks you, did you hit that switch? And, uh, you know, he goes, oh, no, you hit the switch. And then what he does he knows this is going to happen, and he climbs up onto the top of the bridge to get blasted away like Team Rocket and uh, <laughs> fulfilling what was very obviously a lifelong long dream of his. <laughs> Honestly, we, we stand a Goomba who knows what he wants. <laughs> anyway, he's fine. We see him in the credits. And we have the first of many... Yes. Cut scenes. <laughs> there are, this is the point where there are a lot more cutscenes. So if you guys have any donations, feel free to let them uh, let them go. <laughs> Absolutely, we have a twenty-five dollar donation here from Ice Blue that says. 
Greetings, lucky viewer. I am a viewer from the crowd, and I'm here to tell you, the Fitness Gram Pacer Mario is an RNG test that progressively gets more difficult. The Pacer Mario will begin in 30 seconds. The speed starts slow, but spins speedier each time you hear this signal. A single action command should be completed every time you hear this sound. <laughs> Remember to spin in a straight line and swag hammer. The second time you fail to perform an action command before the sound, your run is over. The test will begin on the word start. Start, GL on the run, you're going to do wonderful. Thank you, Ice, I love you, man. Thank you so much. And uh, shout outs to Rubix as well, who, who wrote that coffee pasta. She's a, a regular viewer of mine. And she also, I believe Morpheus is holding it, stitched that crochet bow for me. And it's just wonderful. <laughs> I've got another one here if you'd like. Yeah, go for it. All right, we got a $5 donation from Tanner the Koopa that says, so you're going by GDQ Runner Mix oh, no. 4 now, huh? Haha, <laughs> ha, what's up, plumber? It's Tanner from Dry Dry Outpost. Remember me? <laughs> me and the other archaeologists used to give you a hard time with the outpost jumping glitchless. Sorry you were just an easy target. I can see much has changed. Now we don't even see each, see, see each other as you... <laughs> Eric Carey Skip. We're married now, by the way. I see you helped raise over 50 coins for Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> and as much as I have bullied you over the years, I have to admit, I just wanted a moment to shine in your brilliance by getting in your way. Nice catching up. And one more thing. Go jump on the true pathetic Koopa, Bowser, until he dies. <laughs> I, I, I really want to know who wrote that because that, that was masterfully put together. That was a 10 out of 10 well Boston. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that, that was a good laugh. <laughs> so for context, uh, Tanner the Koopa is a Koopa in Dry Dry Outpost that gets in the way of doing a trick that saves like five seconds in the glitchless category, but it's completely RNG whether or not he gets in your way. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst part is too, if you, uh, there are certain NPCs in this game, we'll go buy a couple of them, that are coded to walk towards you if you like, if you get close enough for uh, for the speech bubble to pop up, and he's really close to that pole, you need to like jump up and land on it, and then do another jump. And it is so precise that we tap down for like exactly one frame to get into position for it. So Tanner, he's he's quite the troublemaker. He really likes to press himself up, himself up against that pole and stop you from doing that trick. He's rather notorious. Uh, that that's one back from uh, my glitchless grinding days, <laughs> you know, way back when. <laughs> Anyway, we've got like another two, three minutes of cutscenes. <laughs> <laughs> Prologue is uh, notoriously slow, but uh, we'll be out of it very soon. There will be a lot more to. There will be a lot of interesting things happening uh, pretty much right as soon as we get out. Well, in the meantime, I've got a lot of love coming in for you. We got a $250 donation here from Node that says. Hi, Mix4. Turns out I'm awake right now to catch stream. You've been an amazing friend in my life. I love hanging out around you and your community. Y'all are so caring and I've always and always have a way to make me laugh. Good luck. Keep on paping. I know you'll crush it. Oh, that's so sweet. I love you, Node. You've been a great friend to me, too. <laughs> We also have a $50 donation here from Sienna that says, I don't even know where to start, but I just wanted to say how proud I am to have Mix4 up here representing the PAPE community. Not only is Mix4 an amazing runner, but they're an even better friend. It is such an honor to be here to support you in this great cause. We love you, congratulations, and best of luck. You guys are going to make me cry. I can't do BTS if I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you, Sienna. I love you, too. <laughs> We also got a $5 donation here from Gay Plant that says, Hi, Mix4, Morp, Phantom, Yo, Lopez, GL. <laughs> so proud for you. You've got this. I have never played this game myself, but I'm very happy to, to be a part of your community. Any take good care of Goombario, less than three. Yes, yes, good care of him. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the good luck. Thank you for the good luck, Plant. 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 <laughs> Shoutouts to Chef Bear. <laughs> okay, so the whole point of uh, Prologue was, you know, a bunch of uh, narrative stuff that results in us getting this item, which is the Lucky Star. Uh, this item enables us to use action commands. <laughs> in reality, it does nothing. Uh, the thing that actually allows us to do that is uh, watching that previous cutscene with Princess Peach and Twink. So here, now we get the ability to use timed hits to block and take less damage and uh, to enhance our attacks to deal more damage. Hardest block in the game? <laughs> uh, uh, unironically, maybe. It's up, it's up there. All it's, it's so slow. <laughs> what is it, like four frames? That block, that block saves four frames. Most blocks don't save any time, but that one in particular saves four frames. Mm -hmm. Usually any projectile attacks will save time if you block them. 
So anyway, now we have action commands, and this is just about the end of prologue. Uh, this trick coming up is another one that I will probably need a little focus for. There is an extremely low probability uh, that the game will crash when I do this. Uh, it won't happen if I'm focused, but I have been known to lose focus from time to time. So uh, I'm going to be quiet and let my couch take over for this one. So there's a little bit of RNG involved because uh, we need this green toad, <laughs> this beloved green toad over here to come towards the right side and let us clip out of bounds. <laughs> Once we're in this spot in the mailbox in the post office, we can move out of bounds to land on the seam to the right, and, and that puts nice. us next to the loading zone. <laughs> Very nice. That skips, well done. Thank you. That skips about 45 seconds worth of cutscenes. Yeah. And now we're in chapter one. This is where the run actually kind of starts. Yeah, do you want to go over some spin movement, Lopez? Explain how that works a little bit. Yeah, so the fastest way to move in this game, as you can see, is just spinning around and jumping out of the end of your spin so that you can avoid the little bit of end leg that you get. You can also buffer your spins in this game if you press Z right at the end. There's a like three-frame window towards the end of your spin where you can press the Z button right before you press A to jump out of it, and you'll spin on the first possible frame of landing. It's a little bit of an advanced technique. Not a lot of people do it, but it's really cool to see. And it gets even better later on. You'll see we've been collecting some coins throughout of Prologue. We'll be collecting some more throughout Chapter 1. Those coins will be used later on to get a badge called Speedy Spin, and that badge will increase our spin speed and spin distance for 50 coins. So that'll that'll speed up a lot of the game and help us move faster and dodge some enemies. It's really hard to dodge some of the enemies without Speedy Spin, actually. Mm -hmm. It saves an incredible amount of time. Enormous. Yeah. 20 minutes-ish, maybe, in this run alone. It, it saves yeah. so much time. It is, like, unbelievable how much faster your run is. Like, you could be... Uh, there is some RNG in getting speedy spin. Get used to us saying there's some RNG because there's a lot. Uh, uh, but there is some RNG. It's like 75% for it to show up in the bad shot. It, and it takes 25 seconds to reload. You could have to reload that bad shop like 20 times, and it wouldn't even be close to like losing time to pick it up as opposed to just going. It is that impactful. So... Anyway, here's a, here's another mini game. I have to kind of pay attention to this one. Uh, this is RNG2, Big Shocker. Yep. <laughs> the third cycle is much harder on JP for some reason. Uh, supposedly it moves at the same speed, but supposedly. I... <laughs> Every time I've looked at both of them side by side, the ja Japanese looks way harder. I don't, yeah. I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Been told from sources that they move at the same speed. Anyway, you'll see why this is hard uh, right now. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people use a counting method here. Um, I know at least me and Morph do. I definitely did not count that, and I thought it was a third tree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I follow it with my eyes. I, I sometimes get, like, even odd, depending on how confident I'm feeling. Uh, but that... It, once you're experienced enough, you can follow with your eyes, but it, it is not easy. And, like, a lot of runs die to that because uh, a lot of the longer runs have uh, tight experience point routing. Oh, this is Cooper, by the way. He's our new friend. Uh, <laughs> a lot of these runs have uh, very tight experience routing, and that uh, when you get that minigame wrong, it has an 80% chance of dropping a fuzzy on you, uh, which you cannot avoid or run away from. Uh, which is an unavoidable six experience points at level one. So uh, it is extremely common for like a new runner uh, playing on JP, especially if they used to play on English, failing that and then having to reset their run. I've even seen people save over it, you know, just to be sure. So that's one of the trickier parts of chapter one. Anyway, during one of those cutscenes that we didn't watch and also couldn't understand even if we did, uh, <laughs> uh, we were told to seek out a blue-shelled Koopa. Uh, this happens to be Cooper, who is our new friend for crossing rivers and uh, also launching into space. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> So now that we have him, we have access to the dungeon of Chapter 1. Uh, wow, that's never happened before. That <laughs> coin RNG was extremely kind. Uh, usually that coin changes directions two or three times and also flies, like, really far away from the loading zone. So that was actually pretty lucky. Um, I've seen it go into the loading zone before, too, to the right. Mm -hmm. Here's some more coins. That dude is waiting to ambush us. Uh, not really in the mood to fight him right now. Uh, 
this well, guy. This guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy. This one is not fun. This guy is on the list. Okay, uh, that was a good spot. We, yeah. we, we have a list of like annoying NPCs and enemies, and that guy is number one. He's he is one of the few enemies in the game that can do something that will like get you no matter what strategy you use to pass him. So uh, we got lucky this time, and it's only bad on the way there. Thankfully, on the way back, it's not going to be a big deal. So here's uh, here's the Ninja Koopa. Uh, this guy is the boss of Chapter One. Uh, well, one of them. There are four of them. <laughs> I don't really feel like fighting them either, personally. I don't know how my couch feels, but uh, we're gonna go in, uh, dip our toes in Chapter One a little bit, and you know, see how we feel about it. Plus so, the music. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. The music yeah. of the boss of Chapter One is a certified banger, but uh, unfortunately, I, I'm just not feeling it. I don't think we're gonna do that today. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. The music here in the fortress isn't uh, my personal favorite. Yeah, no, I can't <laughs> say that. But the Cooper Bros theme, very good. This dungeon has maybe the biggest difference in quality between like just the ambient dungeon music and the boss music of the entire game. <laughs> it's like the normal music in here is so gloomy and boring that the like you could you could party to the to the boss music. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this thing. <laughs> this pink shoe will allow us to defeat one boss later. That's all we're going to use it for. <laughs> yeah, power bones. We can get into that a little bit later once we get to that fight. Yeah. So here's staircase skip. What are stairs? <laughs> <laughs> it was just, just suggestion. suggestions. Just suggestions. Yeah, basically you can use Mario's thin-like stature <laughs> to slip in between the gap on the floor and the staircase and... With some out of bounds movement, you can end up on the top floor because of the way out of bounds works in this game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why he's Paper Mario. Yeah, <laughs> it's so yeah. funny that one of the uh, one of the premier tricks in learning any percent, at least on the surface, appears to be taking advantage of Mario being made of paper to slip through a paper thin gap. I think it was uh, Chomsky <laughs> who pointed that out to me originally, and it it, it has not left my mind since. <laughs> Anyway, before we uh, before we get Bombette and Cooper is off screen for the rest of the run, I just want to say <laughs> he has the smallest arms I've ever seen. He's like a little T-Rex. Look at him. Look at how tiny his arms are. I, I can't unsee that. I've never noticed that on some. <laughs> I noticed it on random Z emotes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is Bombette. She's our third buddy of uh, the five we're going to pick up today. Uh, she explodes, and turns out exploding is good in certain contexts. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, we need her to escape the jail that we got ourselves into, uh, foolishly. Oops. Uh, turns out if you face right, this cutscene is actually slightly shorter because she manually walks behind Mario. Uh, so we, we hammer to the right just so she goes where she's going a little faster. And uh, we get ambushed by these guys on our way out. And uh, thanks to that fire flower you picked up earlier, this is a one-turn fight. Uh, the bombs have three HP, but also they're weak to fire. So if you hit them with uh, a fire or an electricity move, they just immediately explode. Uh, charming little touch for an enemy that, you know, <laughs> you would almost never be doing that, you know, even in a casual playthrough. But uh, we need those coins uh, for the V item TM later that we're going to pick up. Uh, but I, I'm bored of Chapter 1. What do you guys think? I, I think I've seen enough of this place. I've had enough. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. We, we can just go. I think it's time to get out of here. I really like trains. Yeah, yeah. dude, you, we're, you know where we should go next? We should go to Mount Rugged. Yeah, that really place like, is nice. Look at they like yeah. logs too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really love big, ni uh, nice big logs of wood, especially if they're in my way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're gonna leave. Uh, this place is nothing more for us. We just came here to get Bombette. She is our combat buddy for the majority of this run. Uh, with a couple of exceptions. Uh, this guy is not really a problem on the way back because you can just kind of sidestep out of his way. It's way easier than avoiding him on the way there. So we have a little time. We have like maybe a minute for donations if you guys have anything. Oh, I've got a ton here. So I uh, just want to remind everybody, we are still uh, trying to finish out that incentive for the glitch exhibition at the end of this run. We need a little bit over $7,500 more dollars. So please get your donations in and be sure to attach the glitch exhibition incentive for Paper Mario to your donation when you send that in. Uh, we got a $25 donation here from Big Man. 
He says, had to stay awake for a speed run of my all-time favorite game. Let's be sure to get that Glitz exhibition. Good luck, Mix 4, on the run. We also got a, uh, where is it? I, I had it here a second ago and I lost it. Uh, we had a $10 donation from Nightcore that says, if this is called Paper Mario, why aren't the other games called Fleshy Mario? <laughs> Petition for a name change for the franchise? Hang uh. it. <laughs> This trick is another very long LZS. I probably shouldn't have said anything while I was doing it. <laughs> yeah, or right we, now. Yeah, I'm we're doing, stop talking. We're doing log skip right now. This is pretty similar in vain to the junior skip we did earlier in the run. But this room's a little bit laggy, so it's pretty yeah. tough. But yeah. they get it. And once you get near Merlin's house, it gets even worse. Yeah. Yeah, it gets laggier the further you get. <laughs> There's an alternative method to this where you can clip behind the bad shop and do some out-of-bounds movement to get the same effect, but doing the loading zone storage jump saves about uh, 8 to 12 seconds, depending. Mm -hmm. It depends on the method you choose to do it. I probably lost a little time going for that method, but if you fail the other one, it, it costs way more time, like yep. 30 seconds per attempt or something like that, and I think I probably lost 10 yeah. per try there. So I, I lost a little bit compared to first try of the other one, but it's not too bad. Anyway, trains. Who likes trains? <laughs> <laughs> not a whole lot going on on this train. Yep. Except this banging music, though. So we have, like, another minute for donations. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. We've got a uh, $25, $25 donation here from Headnisk that says, technically, no technique in this run is a glitch because you use normal mechanics such as jumping and moving in order to get unexpected results. Every technique in this run is possible by physically manipulating the buttons and analog stick on the controller. Therefore, I would like to propose that we rename this category to glitchless any percent in order to more properly describe the contents of the run. Remember that dying is dying to final Bowser is just RNG manipulation. Much love from Sweden. <laughs> He's right, you know. <laughs> he, he is right. He is right. That's a famous copy pasta. He put uh, a, a version of that in his uh, All Bosses submission once. It was... Uh, We've we've been quoting it for what like two years now, <laughs> at least <something laughs> ever like since. That. <laughs> ever since it's it's so funny. I love that mask. <laughs> anyway, this guy's really rude. You see how he just bumped into me like that while flying backwards? I don't know how he even managed to fly backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's like a like a hummingbird. I <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Humming Koopa. We're gonna ignore that guy. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. I don't like his vibes. I think they're off. Yeah, it's pretty rude. Anyway, uh, that's a whack a bump. This is the most busted consumable in the game. <laughs> whack a lovers look away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys. Uh, if anybody really loves whack a, I, I would advise that you you look away until the end of Mount Rugged because we're going to do some violence. <laughs> Speaking of violence... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we're about to make up that experience we mentioned during Junior Skip with this cleft here. Well, that was... Yeah. I didn't like that bomb. That took too long <laughs> to get over there, but we got it. It's fine. So this is one of three encounters we take during uh, the safe version of this run, just to make up EXP. Uh, this one we need to do early. It doesn't make up much, but we really need it in order for in order to do the next boss fight. So we're going to get FP there from that level up. Wow, that's a wow. lot of drops. Wow, wow. <laughs> And this is early seed. So this trick is a little bit silly. There is a very, very thin gap in this wall here. And with some precise remapping, you can clip in and land out of bounds like Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Very nice. <laughs> First try. Can't say I've ever talked to that guy backwards before. That's a new one. But yeah, that's uh, one of the more annoying tricks in the run. A lot of people do not do not learn that for a long time when they're picking this game up. It is. It's variant depending on your controller type too, so yeah, it's like different for every person playing this game. It's yeah. also frame perfect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it. Yet another frame perfect trick. Uh, we're done with like half of them <laughs> or something like that. There's a lot more still. I will let the wacko lovers know when they're when they can turn back to the <laughs> turn back to the screen. There's a little more violence coming. All right, the violence has concluded. Wacka lovers may now return to your viewing stations. Uh, <laughs> we need 50 coins total, so I'm gonna go ahead and snag that on the way back. And this guy, you know, I, I hope he gets what he's looking for. 
uh, in finding his letters, but I I am not interested in helping him because that is slow. <laughs> so we are just going to leave him uh, behind to find every letter in the Mushroom Kingdom by himself. Uh, he lost them all, so like you know, it's it's his uh, it's his business to save his job. That's not Mario's. Seems fair to me. Yeah. We'll, we'll help yeah, him another time. Reasonable. And how many <laughs> letters are there? Like twenty five. Twenty something. Yeah. <laughs> that's twenty five. That's a lot of mail to lose for a mailman. I think he just like had a hole in his mail bag or something and just didn't <laughs> notice one day when he was out flying. Anyway, uh, so speedy spin. There you go. 75%. 75% chance this badge is in the shop and it increases our movement speed dramatically. So uh, we really hope it's here. If it's not, you just have to go two screens away to reload it. But uh, anyway, Ralph is on the list. Um, <laughs> because he, he always does this. I, I think I've been uh, in practice. I have gotten unlucky more than I have gotten it so far. And hey, oh, I, hey, I, I thought it wasn't there. I'm going to be honest. I thought it wasn't there. <laughs> First try. Yeah, if it's not there, you hope it's not there 10 times. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Still waiting for it to get broken, that world record. All right, so here we have another trick, uh, pretty famous in Paper Mario speedrunning, called Blue House Skip, where with some frame-perfect jump and some precise stick movement, you can just jump into the blue house. Yep. That door is locked on the other side, so we can't really enter it. That skips a whole bunch of chapters. Just, just, just a few. That just trick few. saves like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> it skips chapters three and four and a lot of five. And most of two. <laughs> Yeah, so now we have Blooper. And Power Bounce is uh, pretty important for Blooper. I did equip it, right? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have to start eating uh, those whack a bumps if I didn't. Yeah, so M4 is going for 30 damage in total across three bounces. And the lowest you can get is an 8, as long as you don't drop it. Uh, cap was too low. I'm scared. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that that's, would be that's fair. That's fair. You're, you're looking for as much as possible. Normally, you have Parry Carry for this fight, but I skipped him because he he was really rude. So. Ooh, oh, there it is. Six percent, by the way. <laughs> Justified. <laughs> there is a chance that I could get eight capped or nine capped again. Uh, that would be incredibly unlucky, and it would lose a lot of time. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, we're nice. good. Okay. Nice. So uh, the number of bounces you're allowed to do is completely random. <laughs> so we just hope for the best uh, at that point. Yeah. Uh, it also gets harder to continue bouncing the more you get. Uh, it caps out at a two-frame window once you've gotten six. Anyway, here's chapter five. <laughs> Still got to scope out the vibes on this one, too, but uh, I think I'll play with it for a little bit and see where we get. Who's this guy? I don't know, yeah. but he's uh, he got himself in that situation. <laughs> he's not having a good time. There aren't there even he? there aren't even any spear guys like in screens connected to this, so he had to like go out, <laughs> find a guy to aggravate, and then carry him back here. He brought like, it upon himself. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Colorado. I don't. I like you're cool, but man, <laughs> yeah, take better care of yourself. He even has a sense of humor about it, because that dialogue box I just skipped was him screaming that he's getting attacked again when he's just standing there with a goofy smile on his face. <laughs> so this Mario's kind of tired. I'm very yeah. sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good night. Pretty new change to the route where we actually use the Toad House to restore our stats. We'll need those for a little bit later. And this is the fastest way to do it with this route. Surprisingly, that's very slow, uh, but it is the fastest option unless we route in some more RNG. Uh, that is not <laughs> marathon friendly, so I, we, we are not doing that. <laughs> anyway, this is Sushi. She's a fish who got stuck in a tree. Hi, Sushi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sushi is going to be, well, she's, I mean, she's a fish. She's yep. going to do what fishes do. <laughs> swim. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. going to swim really good. She's going to swim really, really, really good. <laughs> yeah. You guys are not ready for just how well Sushi is about to swim. Anyway, uh, you know, the chapter five was cool and all. I like that I got a fish out of it, uh, but I think I'm done. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's pretty humid. Yeah, it's yeah I think cool. it's time to move on. We got on. the fish, so that seems like enough. Yeah, I think we're going to leave. Uh, you know what does seem interesting to me? That one dock in Toad Town. I wonder what you can do with that. There is a space where you can use Sushi in Toad Town. Yeah. 
So I think I'm going to go see what that's all about. I mean, there's a star piece over there. Yeah, that's true. I should go get the star piece. The upgrade block? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Those are, those are good ideas, guys. Keep them coming. That guy's on the list now. He wasn't before. <laughs> he wasn't before, but that, uh, that was very listy behavior of him. <laughs> so you're probably wondering why we're doing all this backtracking into Totan with sushi. But this is part of the new tricks that have been found recently in Paper Mario. We have called it seed duping. And part of it begins with this setup with sushi. We're going to be trying to go for something called sushi glitch, where we can swim on land with sushi, which is definitely not intended. This is way more precise than it probably looks. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember exactly how precise this initial lineup is, but it is very coordinate specific is what I do now. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Anyway, I knew there was something weird about that dock, right? Like, it, it, it was just looking, <laughs> it was just sitting there looking real suspicious. What do you mean? Sushi is swimming. I think that's yeah. pretty normal. Yeah. Well, well, okay, yeah, that is normal intended behavior. This is exactly what they, what the devs wanted us to do when they put that dock there. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm getting Chapter 3 vibes right now. I can't explain it, but I really, really feel like going to the forest right now. I mean, I think the fuzzies are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go see the fuzzies. That's fun. I, I, I really, really want to get into exactly two encounters with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go, uh, we're going to go see uh, our friend, Mr. Fuzzy. Anyway, uh, yeah, Sushi's got a lot of uh, interesting properties going on. <laughs> uh, you can swim on land with her in a few specific instances. That specific one that got me this state uh, was actually kind of a, a little legend in the community for many years because uh, somebody who was like reputable in the community got it, but it wasn't on video and they weren't like trying to do anything weird. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't captured, but we you know everyone believed him because he was a he was a notorious glitch hunter. So uh, it took years and years, but eventually. Uh, Gosh, I don't remember who it was exactly, but somebody found a setup that lets you do that consistently. Anyway, here are the fuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> they look kind of spooky. Yeah, yeah I don't nice know. To I... see them for a little bit there. Yeah. Oh, I gotta, I gotta go back. I gotta go back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think Sushi's the best partner for this, and I don't think this encounter is the best use of my time. But I heard there's a plant that lives in here. Strange, I know, a plant in a jungle, but I think we're gonna <laughs> go, uh, we're gonna go do some stuff over here. Good time to rebadge. Yep. Wait, what's going on? <laughs> there's text scrolling. Oh, there's a seed. Nice. Yep. So he gave me a seed. Uh, I entered, I, I was so rude. I left before our conversation was over. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that up to him. And what's this? It looks like he hasn't been talked to yet. Wow! <laughs> oh, another seed! Another huh. seed! Amazing. Oh, gosh. Anyway, um, so that glitch exhibition we've got on later, if you want to know more about exactly what the heck just happened, uh, definitely put your, uh, put your donations towards that incentive. We'll explain everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's very complicated. <laughs> anyway, uh, through that uh, whole song and dance, uh, you'll see we have four seeds now. Uh, two of them are the same. Through that whole song and dance, we have managed to skip everything up until chapter six. So uh, we're going to enter the door to flower fields and the next difficult part of the run is gonna begin. <laughs> so we have time for donations while she's planting these seeds. These seeds. You betcha. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, we are still trying to get uh, a, that donation incentive met for the Glitch Exhibition. We are just a little bit under $7,500 left for that. Uh, and you know you want to see it. They just plugged it uh, just now. And I know somebody else that wants to see it. Lilith Sloan donated $25. They want to see it. They said, Paper Mario has a special place in my heart. I grew up with the N64, and my wife grew up with the GameCube. So she got to watch me play the Thousand Year Door, and then I watched her play Paper Mario. Good luck, Mix 4. Let's get that glitch exhibition met. I agree. Good taste in incentives, too. <laughs> I'd really love to explain everything. It's quite the story. But uh, for now, we're going to leave that for later. Anyway, uh, here's another loading zone storage trick. It's the last one in the game, and also, depending on who you ask, it's the hardest. Uh, log skip is harder, but, you know, off the record, most people do reasonable methods of that trick, so... <laughs> anyway... Yeah, so this one is a little bit different compared to the ones we've done before. 
because we're trying to get to a specific spot on the right side of this room. And once we get there, we're going to change our angle to be going up left while falling out of bounds. And that'll change Mario's um, falling angle so that way we can land on the seam down here at the bottom. And with some precise movement, you can end up on the other side up here and just skip all of Flower Fields. Very nice. Anyway, uh, Chapter 6 is much better vibes than the other ones. I think I will spend a little more time here. Uh, uh -huh. there, is one, uh, there is one thing that is vitally important that we're going to do here, and that is going to be to fight the Chapter 6 mid-boss, uh, whose name is Lackluster. And really quick, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a shout-out of my own uh, while I'm doing this. Uh, his cool name in Japanese is Jonathan, and back in 2016, uh, a good friend of mine named Misfits, he, what, um, <laughs> his first name was Jonathan, and he was watching GigaDB's uh, AGDQ 2016 run, I think, and he was talking to me about it because he knew I loved Paper Mario, that was my favorite game of all time. Uh, he unfortunately is no longer with us because of COVID, but in one of our conversations during that time, he asked me if I, if I could beat GigaDB's time on the GDQ stage, and I, I told him, heck no, like, I'm not a speedrunner, I could never do that. Uh, but it really goes to show, you know, seven and a half years later, things really can change, and I should have believed in myself all along. He would be so proud to see me here today. <laughs> Anyway, I need to hit all of these blocks or I die, so... <laughs> <laughs> this block is notoriously awkward because he flings the spiny egg off screen and then it shoots back down immediately, so it's kind of tricky at first. Yeah. Yeah, that block is a lot later than it looks. It's different than all the other Lakitu blocks in Chapter 6. It's, it's a lot later. Blocking this one saves 12 frames. Yes, it is a massive amount of time to block that. But anyway, if we didn't do it, we'd have other problems. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any star power to try and heal ourselves with, so that's a major cause for concern. Yeah, big difference from the old route where we actually had Star Storm available to do 7 damage. But we haven't cleared any chapters yet, so, uh, oops. <laughs> oh well. Do we got time for another donation in here? I'm focused, but yeah, you can go ahead. I won't have anything to say for a bit. Okay. We got a $5 donation from Ice Blue that says, Mix 4, I'm breaking up with you. It's not you. You were first try speedy. It's me. I'm Tanner. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is Clippy Boots, but it has to be done. I've just been feeling like our relationship has been stuck in pay prologue and, is, and has been dying in the castle for months. It's time to end it. No Koopa. <laughs> oh, Koopa. Oh, Ice. Oh, a good place for your relationship to be stuck. <laughs> I'll, I'll forgive you this time. <laughs> anyway, here's Jonathan, Lackey Jonathan Lester. He always reminds me of my friend every time I get to him in a run. Anyway, uh, he is also incredibly broken. He comes with a whole slew of bonus features uh, <laughs> that we will really start using it. immediately. <laughs> What? Oh, that was weird. He didn't huh. see me. <laughs> he kind of just ignored you. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen the bean not do anything. I've <laughs> seen that like maybe twice in my entire time running this game. Uh, so that that if that bee hits you, uh, you're dead. Anyway, uh, if something else hits me, I'm gonna be dead. But I do. I did prepare a backup save on my con uh, on my cartridge just in case. So uh, we're not gonna worry too much here. I'm surprised that didn't clip. Here's the burst first bonus feature. Yep. <laughs> Going into any corner, you can just clip right into it after getting on Lackey. Yep. You'll uh, be seeing that a lot later. Bonus feature one of three. We're rapid firing at him <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, the next one's going to be a little harder to explain. Uh, M4 is going to be opening the partner menu on the same frame they encounter a spiny. And that's going to put Mario in a very interesting state called Clippy. Hopefully. Nice, nice. That's frame perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's specifically the second frame after you initiate an encounter with an enemy. Mm -hmm. Frame perfect. Yep. So it's very awkward to time because of that. And we're gonna do it twice. Yep, that was the uh, that was the easy part. 
You'll notice we still have the regular boots and hammer, so we can't just break that block like we normally could. Let's go. Very nice. It's not over yet. It's not over yet, but that was a very good start. Yeah, this one's kind of up to Lackey at this point. Yeah, there's yep. a little bit of RNG here coming up with this clip. So we're going to position Mario in a pretty good spot to try and get into this block. But it all depends on... I, I went a little too early. Yeah. So this is what happens if you uh, if you make that mistake. It loses like 30 seconds or so. Not a huge deal. You just have to go out and get Clippy again. The problem is if he hits you. If you get hit, you fall off of Lackey. I mean, I'd game over. But the <laughs> the other thing that would happen is if I didn't game over, I, I would soft lock. So uh, that's why we have that backup save out there. Yeah, the, three for three. <laughs> the position you need for this trick is very precise on this clip, and there's a little bit of RNG with whether or not Lackey will fly up to you because part of this depends on Mario's X and Z coordinates, I believe. Yes. And Lackey's Y. Very nice. nice. Very good. I would, I, I'll take that any day. I would take that in PB attempts. <laughs> Absolutely. That was good. Anyway, here's the only upgrade we'll be collecting this run, the Ultra Boots. Uh, they increase your jump power to three. It was one. Uh, normally, there's an upgrade between that, but we don't have time. So we're just going to go ahead and grab that. That's our first life stream. We're finally not at mortal, in mortal peril <laughs> if anything happens. I'm still going to be careful because I don't want to die. That was stage. really hard. Yeah. This second's really, really hard. <laughs> yeah, it, that, that's another one of the hardest rooms in the game. It's not really a concern if you have more than one HP, but we... Um, we just came off of fighting a mid-game boss, so we uh, were in a little bit of danger there. But uh, that is over for now. Uh, anyway, I missed Chapter 5. Did you guys? Yeah, I, I mean, we should see more of it. We never even went bit. into the volcano. Let's go do that. Let's let's explore and get our, get our uh, nice hats on and yeah. go for a jaunt in this uh, extremely hot volcano. <laughs> you know, I think we forgot the hammer upgrade in here. Wait, forgot? Yeah. There's a hammer upgrade in here? <laughs> you forgot something? <laughs> I would never, never, ever. <laughs> That's definitely, uh, definitely not something I would do. I have notoriously terrible memory. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Black Lester, uh, this is not a bonus feature. Uh, it's just an intended thing. It's not something that you really use outside of Chapter 8, but he can take you over lava. So we're going to get over here. Uh, you guys have a minute uh, or so for donations, if you would like. Absolutely. I want to remind everybody, we are still trying to uh, meet that uh, incentive for the Paper Mario Glitch Exhibition. We are just over $7,000 away. We can do it, but we're quickly running out of time. So be sure to get your donations in and make sure you put your donation toward that Glitch Exhibition. Uh, I know Wizard of Kitty wants to see that. We, uh, they've got a $50 donation here from them. It says, I see train. Time for a donation train to the Glitch Exhibition. Choo-choo! Choo-choo! <laughs> uh, we also got a $20 donation here from Cats Forever that says, We love Prologue. I disagree. I, I don't but know about that one. I, I disagree, <laughs> but I do really like Cats. Uh, I will so yeah, I'll let it pass I this can't time. can't co-sign that one. Anyway, here's, a, here's another bonus feature. This was found like three days ago. Yeah. <laughs> Literally three days ago. <laughs> so we did that to uh, get that cutscene out of the way. Oh. Yeah, so right now we're doing something called Peach Warping. So basically, the way the Chapter 5 ending works is once you collect the card, you're taken to an escape sequence before the chapter actually ends. But the programmers for the game never thought to permanently seal this area off. So with some out-of-bounds movement with Lackey, you can repeat this escape sequence. And what that does is it ends whatever chapter you're currently in. So since we're in chapter in a chapter six state right now, the game thinks, well, you're doing the escape sequence and you're in chapter six, so let's just move you over to chapter seven after, and mm -hmm. you do this twice. Frame so, perfect, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was frame another perfect. frame perfect trick. Uh, it's one that's like, it's not super super difficult, but uh, it is something that will randomly cause you to lose like 30 seconds plus in a run. Just. Uh, I have a visual cue for it that makes it like relatively consistent, but it's it's still not the easiest trick to do fast. It's easy to do. It's not easy to do fast. Anyway, did you guys miss Peach? I sure did. We haven't uh, we haven't checked in on Peach in uh, quite a while now. I wonder what she's up to. Ah, this. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this is the only Peach intermission that we play in the Any Percent No Ace speedrun nowadays. It's the only one that we can't skip. Uh, the only playable one that we can't skip. 
Uh, so there's about three minutes for donations uh, while we sneak around the castle with a parasol that we never acquired. <laughs> you betcha. We got a $100 donation here from the Kamosh that says, Hello forever. Pape is such a wonderful game with an even more wonderful community. Thank you, M4, and everyone else for helping me love my favorite game even more. Anytime, anytime. I, I could... Uh... One of, one of my favorite things about streaming is getting to share my love of this game with other people. <laughs> and it uh, turns out speed running lets you do that as much as you want. You never run out of content when you're doing that. <laughs> we also got a $25, $25 donation here from Tay D. Pie that says, Haiku? Okay. Paper Mario. I love Paper Mario. Paper Mario. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm on board with it. I love it. I, I love it. Thank I, you so much. I agree with it. <laughs> We got a $15 donation here from Spaceship Yoshi that says, Goomba is Goombario and Goombario's grandfather in Paper Mario. He is an elder Goomba and has extensive knowledge of the world, which comes from his adventures as a youth. That is copy-pasted straight from the Paper Mario wiki, by the way. <laughs> I love you, GV. Thank you. Uh, Rune Raven FP uh, sends in $10. They said, I'm so glad Goombario finally gets to be on the big stage. And we also have a $50 donation here from Ulgebid that says, Good luck on the Paper Mario Run Mix 4. My mom got me this game when I was just five years old and defined a huge part of my childhood as an intro to RPGs. It's been my favorite ever since. It's a genuine pleasure to see it at SGDQ 2023. Also, love you, Mumsy. Less than three. You guys want to hear a cute story that reminds me. Uh, I got this game initially when I was like six years old back in 2001. And... Uh, my motor skills were a little underdeveloped when I was a small child. And uh, when I got to the boss of chapter six, uh, Huff and Puff, uh, you know, we skip him because he's slow, but he, uh, the boss fight uh, mechanics require a lot of A button mashing. And I, I you know, six year old me just couldn't do it <laughs> since I was underdeveloped. So I used, to, I used to play that game sitting next to my mom. And every time Huff did something that required I mashed, I would go, mom, mom, please do it for me. <laughs> and she always did. She always did. My mother's a very sweet woman as well. <laughs> got time for a few more? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we got a $250 donation here from Amy Percent that says, let's make that Paper Mario glitch showcase happen. And I agree, we are inching ever closer, but we are still about uh, $6,500, a little bit more than $6,600 away from uh, getting that uh, goal met. Now, we are a little more than halfway through the run at this point, and uh, the bulk of what remains is probably the boss fights at the end. Uh, the, uh, they're very long, and I will have to concentrate because if you miss a single action command, you will die. So we, I'm not, I don't know about you guys, I'm not down to die on the stage, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus pretty hard on that one. <laughs> but uh, this next part of the run, we're going to do a second Peach Warp, and uh, because we're in a Chapter 7 state, it's going to skip us straight to the end of Chapter 7 and uh, the beginning of Chapter 8. I would say we have like three or four more minutes if you guys want to read off some more. Yeah, I got a $10 donation here from Tiff that says, Hello, Paper Mario. This is Goomba King, and I write this letter painstakingly to inform you that I will be pressing charges against you for your misdemeanors. I will need to be paid damages for the destruction of my house, the hospital bills for my flavored Goombas, Eld Star bless their souls, the hours that went into scraping me off the background, and the nut you dislodged from my tree. Don't think you'll be spinning your way out of this one. I'll see you in court. Oh, <laughs> uh, we'll see if you can catch me. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Tiff is a, a very, very close friend of mine. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, just doing another Peach Warp. You, got, you can go ahead. Sure, I got a $25, $25 donation here from The Gentle Bro that says, Longtime viewer, first time donating. Had to donate during one of my favorite games of all time, and who could resist these wonderful wack -a prizes? Best of luck to the runner and putting this towards that glitch exhibition. Absolutely, thank you very much. <laughs> We also have a $5 donation here from Gay Plant. This is a, a, a singing one, so uh, you'll have to bear with me for a moment. <laughs> <clears throat> On the 12th day of Pape, Boss Bowser gave to me 12 runs dying to turn to shielding, 11 anti-guys attacking, 10-minute Goombario splits, 9 peach cutscenes, 8 shops, no speedy, 7 volcanoes exploding, 6 fried jars drinking, 5 golden pigs, <laughs> 4 ghost transforms, 3 bounce caps, 2 coop patrols, and a green toad in the way of BTS. <laughs> you, you, beautiful. You did amazing. You did amazing. I loved it. That was great. <laughs> Thank you, plant. Uh. 
Do you got time for more? Yes. Yeah, I'm oh. surprised I didn't fall in the lava during that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a $10 donation here from Chris that says, Step one, I am being put in a situation. Step two, I ask a random passerby for help. Step three, the passerby ignores me. The situation will never be resolved. Good luck with Paper Mario. Absolutely love this game. <laughs> me too, and I especially love ignoring uh, people in need during my speedruns. <laughs> I'm noticing a pattern here with a lot of these donations that are coming in. <laughs> We got a fifteen dollar donation here from Spaceship Yoshi. It says, "Happy Pride Month, my gamers! GLGL to my good friend Mix Four. We're incredibly proud of you and how hard you've worked. You and your community have brought me so much joy and friendship over the years. Shoutouts to Morph, Phantom, and Lopez on the couch, and everyone watching from Discord too. P.S. Rematch me in Hello Kitty Ro Roller Rescue, coward. Less than three. <laughs> <laughs> Is that that's a challenge? That that does sound like a challenge oh, to me. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> I guess I know what I'm grinding next. We got a $25 donation here from 8 Breckman that says, Nothing like seeing Morpheus and Phantom commentating Paper Mario. Love you guys. Good luck on the run. Less than three. Thank you. <laughs> we got time for more? Yeah. All right. We got a $50 donation here from I Am Tucker that says, The game that started it all for me. This game holds a special place in my heart as it was the first game I ever fully beat 100%. I'm glad I randomly woke up from sleep as it must have been fate for me to watch this run. <laughs> Uh, we got a $5 donation here from Illegally Sam that says, I gotta donate $1 for every any in this Paper Mario any percent run. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that one requires a little bit of explanation if you're not in the know. Uh, there was, uh, gosh, was it me? I think it might have been me. I, I typoed uh, any five on my splits instead of any percent back before, uh, back before Ace was found, so it was just called any percent at the time. So I typoed any five, and I thought it was so funny that I just left it and screamed like that for... A really long time. I, I think that was part of my stream for like at least six months was that I was grinding any five and not any percent. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have plenty of time. There's not going to be a whole lot happening until we get to Bowser's Castle, at which point there is going to be a lot happening. So uh, th this is a, a really good stretch, maybe of like six, seven minutes or so before the first really hard thing I have to do. Yep. That's also a premiere trick that's... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's never been done before uh, at a marathon, so definitely stay tuned for that. All right, well, I'll take that as an invitation to just keep reading them off until you uh, until you stop me. So let's go for it. Let's let's do this. Uh, we got a twenty-five dollar donation here from Venta Leon that says, "Let's go, Pape Team. Wishing Mix Four the best. I loved watching and being a part of this community over the years. Hi, Morph. Hi, Lopez. Hi, Phantom. Morph, when are you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> oh man." We got a $100 donation here from Drakar that says, Seeing Paper Mario on N64 brings back so many memories. Thanks for the nostalgia. No problem. <laughs> I'm happy to do it. Shadow Sylvia 99 sends in $25 with the comment, Hey M4, good luck and have fun. Super hyped to see the run. Hope it all goes well. So far, it has been exceeding my expectations by a lot, actually. <laughs> my only problems being with LZS when, uh, you know, I'm playing on a completely different monitor than I practice on at home is far more than I, I could have asked for, honestly. <laughs> we got a $25 donation here from Dr. Toadstool that says, Dear Mix4, please come to the castle. I've baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Dr. Toadstool Mark. Classic. <laughs> 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 thank you, Mark. And thank you too, Sylveon. I, I don't think I said that. <laughs> We got another ticket for the $5 train here that's uh, from a poor college student that says $5 train for the glitch exhibition. Yeah, and we are looking like we're just over $6,000 away from uh, getting that met. So let's get those donations in for that glitch exhibition. You know you want to see it, and I sure want to see it too. Lord Levius19 sends in $25 with the comment, Hey, it Mix4 and Couch, Paper Mario 64 is also my favorite video game of all time. So happy to see and hear a strong representation of the Paper Mario speedrunning and randomizer community. Good luck and have fun, fam. You got this. Smiley face. Thank you. I, I play a lot of randomizer as well. There's, uh, there's a league going on that both Phantom and I were a part of uh, that's uh, actually ending soon. Uh, this would be a, a good time to plug that, I guess. Uh, there's a community channel called Paper Races that uh, that restreams a lot of uh, high-level matches that happen every week. And uh, those should be... Uh, we weren't expecting them to be ready so soon, but those should be ready uh, very soon after we return from GDQ. We got a $50 donation here from Aaron Rose and also Kenny that says, Hey, M4, it's your two favorites, patent pending, reminding you of your of our fleeting existence. 
Three things to note. New Game Plus would be done by now, shaking my SMH. <laughs> Ken has no idea this is happening, and also glad you could finally make it here after about three years of keep me keeping you company. You've come so far, and it's great to see. Have fun with the run. M4, Ken and I will always be here for you. Thank you, guys. Uh, also, two of my closest friends. They've been watching me since my very early days of running this game. Uh, back when I only played Glitchless for about a year. Uh, SGDQ 2019 was actually the inspiration for me to finally start speedrunning after years of just believing I, there's no way I could ever do it. Uh, so, you know, they've been around about that long, I think. And uh, it's really... I, 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 you know, I'm here running. I'm near the end, actually, and I still can't believe I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> We got a $25 donation here from Ray. It says, let's get that glitch exhibition hype! Hype! <laughs> uh, we got a $50 donation here from It's Caravel that says, if Prologue has a million fans, I am one of them. <laughs> if Prologue has 10 fans, I am, also, I am one of them. If Prologue has one fan, that is me. If Prologue has no fans, then I am no longer on this earth. If the world is against Prologue, then I am against the world. <laughs> I respect the dedication but I disagree. <laughs> it is very taxing to have to do the same 20 minutes every time you reset. <laughs> I, I speed run myself and I can confirm doing the same 20 minutes over and over can be very, very painful. It is, it is very harsh at the top level of this game. But honestly, Prologue has a lot of interesting movement. Hating on it is kind of a bit of a meme in the paint community. <laughs> at least I don't hate it that much. <laughs> you know, relatively speaking. I take it we're good for some more? Yeah. All right. We got a $5 donation here from Amy Kitten Fox that says, I am so proud of you, Mix4. Love you. Oh, I love you too, Amy. <laughs> so uh, really quick, I, I am going to let you get back to the donations, but there is something coming up that is uh, the new trick that I mentioned earlier. It is the hardest trick in the run, and it is not close. So it may take me a few tries. Uh, I will let my couch explain it when I get there, but uh, you'll know what's happening when I'm shoving my nose into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> You're good if you got more. Yeah, you got it. Uh, we got a $5 donation from Ice Blue that says, no pasta this time, but let's get a $5 donation train going for the Glitch Exhibition to get this Glitch Exhibition done. Just kidding, I love Prologue. If I could, I would replace all chapters with Prologue. The amount of skill, calculations, logic, and sheer cunning involved in going fast in Prologue make for the most memorable chapter in Paper Mario. I can't think of a single reason why anyone would want to skip Prologue, or even worse, remove it from the game. The only possible substitute that comes to mind is doing Prologue twice, but that is a story for a different day. I, I'm good. I got God. <laughs> <laughs> I got God. Yeah, I, I was God too. I was God too. I thought it was a I thought it was a donation train starter, but Ice is uh, Ice is quite the little jokester. <laughs> well, we do have more tickets for the uh, for the train. We got a five dollar donation from Toad that says thank you Mario, but our princess is in another glitch exhibition. <laughs> oh, well, let's see if we can find her then. I bet you guys can do it. Twenty dollars comes in from Jur. They said four tickets for the train, please. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> we got a $5 donation from Alice and Lexi that says, Hey, Four, despite our tragic sleep schedules, we both managed to stay up to catch your run live. Lo love you lots, and you're killing it out there. Keep the $5 train going, chat. Let's get the Glitz exhibition met. Thank yeah. you so much. I love you guys, too. You're wonderful. And we are just under $5,800 left to get that Glitz exhibition done. We're not quite there yet, but we are rapidly approaching it. Let's get this done, chat. I just realized that I uh, forgot a backup repel gel <laughs> uh, back in Chapter 5, uh, but that's not going to be a problem <laughs> if I just play correctly, so we're probably fine. <laughs> but I've got a sa uh, another backup save just in case. <laughs> we have time for maybe a few more. Yeah, you got it. We got a $50 donation from Sienna that says, Another donation train was needed to shout out this, for this awesome couch. Morph, Phantom, and Lopez are beyond awesome members of our community. Wave, Frog, GL, and don't forget to think. <laughs> <laughs> we also got a $20, $20 donation from Rubik's the Slime that says, Hello, I am your biggest fan. I am such a big fan that I have single-handedly doubled your electricity bill just <laughs> moving air around. You're welcome. <laughs> Illy Rubix, thank you so much. I really needed to spend that extra money. <laughs> it was just burning a hole in my pocket, you know? Uh, Pyro Hero Matt sends in $50 with the comment, Paper Mario seems like a good time to give some of my paper to GDQ. 
And we got a $15 donation from Crayfish. It says, watching this run makes me think of the thousand year door playthrough I've been doing with my best friend. Love the Paper Mario series. Good luck, Mix 4, and hey, Luna. Tofu Raven sends in $50 with the comment, only a paper thin margin of speed run length left. Let's blast through that incentive. I agree, let's get that uh, incentive met. We have time for maybe one more. We're getting very close to the trick. Yeah, I'll give you a short one. We got a $5 donation from Tech Kyle. It says $5 for the for 5555. Choo choo! Choo choo! All right, so coming up here, we've got a pretty new trick that only became relevant recently with uh, seed duping added to the run. And it's called a uh, blockless clip. So before we would need para carry for this trick and we use the Ultra Boots to do a tornado jump and clip through that badge block there and use Paracarry to hover over the collision and get across this wall. We don't have Paracarry anymore, but we can still get by by holding a precise angle here. That's what the partner menu is for, to buffer this angle, and doing a hammer cancel jump to get squeezed in a little more into this wall. We can roll the stick at very precise values and by pressing B to hammer on the correct frame and stop Mario's movement, we can actually clip in behind those two walls there. This is the only trick in the game that is a clip through a solid wall. At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even gotten the position yet where, you, uh, where it's possible to attempt it. Even setting it up is tricky. very close. That was like a frame late on the hammer. By far the hardest trick in this run. It is not even close. Probably in the game now. Yeah. At this point. There we, there we go. go. Yes. Oh, nice. Let's go. Well done. Thank you. It took me a little longer than in uh, my attempts in the practice room, but I will take that all day. <laughs> Uh, I, I did not choose to do that for speed. Uh, it's not even in my PB yet. I'm still working on it. But I just, I very recently, like as of uh, maybe a few days ago, while I was at GDQ, realized that I would probably be able to do it on stage. So I'm very happy to have gotten that. Anyway, who wants to see uh, some reality warping? Anyone down? <laughs> oh. There's more of that corner clipping in a second here. Yep. This position's a little awkward. For Us the usually I get it a little faster than that, but that is uh, just a silly <laughs> for a fun clip. We're making amazing time, so I just wanted to show that off. You can kind of just walk into that staircase. <laughs> yeah, there's another room that looks exactly the same, but you can't do it there. Yep. <laughs> Wish we could tell you why, but... <laughs> so would we be seeing more of uh, things like that during the glitch exhibition at the end of this run? So the glitch exhibition is actually going to be, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, we've had Jaycog on here before and she did a glitch exhibition that honestly covered like quite a bit more than uh, what I'm ready to. The glitch exhibition today, should we meet it, is about seed duplication and the massive impact that it has had on uh, speedrunning in this game. We'll explain what's going on, uh, first of all, since we didn't talk about that that much uh, while I was doing it in the run. And we will explain how it has changed every category except glitchless uh, permanently. <laughs> So it is, it is a huge deal, and uh, I, I think it's worth, you know, it's 15 minutes of fame, you know, just so people can see what's going on and uh, how we do it. Anyway, I should really not talk while doing this. <laughs> yeah, right now we're... I've got a bad the, habit. <laughs> we're in the flood room right now, and basically what's going on is uh, what you're supposed to do is raise the water levels up continuously until you can reach that key with sushi. But with some lackey clipping out of bounds, you can walk on the seam here and go out of bounds to fly yourself upwards here. And this is where Cooper comes in. With any stored jump, you can just use that momentum from your stored jump to just launch yourself upwards with Cooper and get that key that way. 
Like he's giving me a little difficulty with his bonus features tonight. <laughs> <laughs> These this corners are bit. not easy to clip through. I'm just going to play safe. Fair. Yeah. I don't want to. There, there's high soft lock risk yeah. uh, for the ending I normally do, and it only saves like three seconds. So let's just chill with it. <laughs> I almost did it. I was lining up. <laughs> I was, I I was like, that. wait a minute. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> hang on. No. <laughs> anyway, oops. <laughs> oops. <laughs> I guess I might as well just kill it. He kind of just walked Oops. under your feet anyway, so... Oops, I did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the second of three encounters that we take to make up EXP in this run. And uh, we're going to upgrade HP on that one. Yeah, Chapter 8 experience is going to give a lot. We're at level 2 right now, I believe, still. Mm -hmm. So the scaling on that is going to be very, very high. I'm not sure if that was 2 or 3 frames. Well, I guess we'll see in a sec. You, this is a very precise clip as well. Yeah, so here's another big instance of lackluster clipping coming into play. You can get out of bounds here and land on the seam and just avoid all of these encounters, which normally you'd have to fight them, and they're very difficult fights at this stage in the game. Especially if you're level two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's RNG, by the way. That guy can just get you, and there's nothing you can do. Yep. <laughs> Thankfully, it wouldn't be too terribly impactful in a, in a safe route run, but uh, it would be annoying, and it would uh, lose us quite a bit of time. So I'm glad that didn't happen. Oh, I almost forgot. Hey. Hey, dude. Come over here. Let's come hang out. <laughs> this guy is... Uh, we want him to walk into us or hit us with his hammer. This is the third encounter we take for EXP. Uh, it is really, really fast if he first strikes you or if he runs into you optimally. And it's RNG. He, he will notice you or he won't notice you. He'll first strike you or he won't. Uh, it, he wasn't going to do it there, so I had to just run into him to make it as fast as possible. He was just playing really safe. Right? So 65 <laughs> star points. It is That's more than any of the endgame bosses give, by the way. <laughs> One turn fight really fast. Yep. So we now have the EXP that we want for the rest of the run. Anyway, there's another break uh, coming up. I would say starting now uh, until the end of the quiz, we have plenty of time for donations, probably two or three minutes. Yeah, you got it. We got a $5 donation from Steak that says, Goompa is a cruel parent, but an effective teacher. Its final lesson is carved <laughs> deep in my psyche that this kingdom and all its toadstools are diseased. <laughs> Speedy spin is a myth. Eldstar is a joke. <laughs> we are all pawns controlled by something greater. Memes, the DNA of the soul, the shape of our will. They are the culture. They are everything we pass on. Expose someone to Clippy long enough, they will learn to boots. They become a carrier. Goombario, Cooper, Bombette, all memes, all passed along. <laughs> That is so good. So there was a period last year where I ran uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance for a little while. That's a, a papified clip of the, the famous monsoon speech about memes that you can't skip on the PC version. <laughs> oh, I love that game too. <laughs> I got another one here for you. We got a $5 donation from Paracarry that says, Hello, Mario. This is your now former mail Koopa Paracarry. Unfortunately, I will no longer be able to deliver your mail as I have been fired after my horrendous blunder of losing everything mail. <laughs> if only some kind of mustached fellow had offered, me, uh, had offered to help me find them all. Alas, this is the end of my career. Please treat my replacement kindly. As for me, I'll be moving back in with my mother. Feel free to drop by any time. Regards, Paracarry. <laughs> Wow, he's so nice to us for just ditching him like that. I think Sushi's doing a great job. I think Sushi's day day. doing a great job, too. <laughs> <laughs> so Sushi, uh, in uh, in routes that are not safe, uh, Sushi is your main battle partner for, uh, well, for some of them. She's a little bit faster than uh, most of your other options, uh, but you have a slightly worse chance of finishing. But she's she's doing great. She's doing her best. Anyway, we got a little more time. <laughs> yeah, you got it. We got uh, a $75 donation from Kim. It says, hey, it's your sister tuning in from the West Coast. We grew up playing Mario together, and I am so proud of you. You are always such a joy to watch, and you have truly mastered your craft. Love you, bro, and I will see you soon here in California. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's getting married in a few months. Aww. It was actually going to be a couple weeks ago, but we had, uh, we had complications, so the trip had to be postponed. Well, big congratulations to her. That's awesome. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> We got a $10 donation from Arvents that says, I didn't know Paper Mario is this fun. Thank you, Mix4, The Couch, and Dangerous. Hype! Hype! $5 comes in from Cece. They said, one ticket to the prologue, Tanner. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's been a long time, but if my run was bad enough in Glitchless, I used to reset to him do it, being annoying. <laughs> He's got plenty of tickets back to play. He's got a lot of tickets. Oh, 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 that's unlucky. That, that's really <laughs> unlucky. We got time for a few more? Yep. Yeah, we got a $10 donation from Coer. It says, dropping some paper for glitched Paper Mario. Oh, also Haiku. <laughs> We also got a $10 donation here from Symphony. I think it's Symphony. It says, Did you know that the critically acclaimed N64 game Paper Mario has a glitch exhibition and includes the entirety of all major glitches and the award-winning seed duplication glitch with no restrictions on speed? Donate now and enjoy more of GDQ today. And I agree. We are uh, just about, was that, $4,700, $4,600 away. We're, we're getting so close, chat, but we're not quite there yet. I believe in you. You can do it, but you got to get your donations in. I gotta let you guys know, we're getting really close to the end of this run. Uh, this is uh, basically, we have the final four fights left, uh, three of whom are the end game bosses, and then uh, a few minutes of epilogue, and then we are done. So if you wanna see that exhibition, uh, we gotta get some trains going. We gotta make it happen. We got a $50, $50 donation from Junior Troopa that oh, says, oh. so you're uh, going by GDQ Runner Mix 4 now, huh? Haha, ha, what's up, plumber? It's Junior Troopa, looks like eggs, from the playground. Remember me, <laughs> the one you skipped? Me and all my other forms used to give you a hard time in pretty much every category. Sorry you were just an easy target. I can see not much has changed. Remember Time Save, the one you had, had a crush on? Yeah, I stole him from you again. What? I guess some things never change, huh? Nice no catching way. up, pathetic Koopa. I can't believe you. Dude, I'm going to... This, this guy's going to catch some hands. <laughs> There's no way he stole my crush Time Save from me. Oh, man, that just gets my blood boiling. <laughs> Oh, I got a big one here. We got a $500 donation from Peak Zorro. It says, Glitch Exhibition. I'll donate to that, especially if it makes the prologue even more fun. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the first of the major endgame fights. I, with 15 HP, there's no risk whatsoever. It's just a matter of uh, whether they give you a fast fight or not. They didn't. <laughs> Yeah, if they all transform into Bombette, you can just power bomb and clear all of them off, but M4 is going to have to do Star Storm here to get the rest. Yep, they have 15 HP, so we uh, we hit them with uh, Cooper and then we swapped a Bombette to bait them into transforming into her, uh, because power bomb, uh, since they become bomb enemies, they, uh, they are cleared immediately when hit with an explosion. We got time for some more donations? Uh, we are heading right into the first of the major three boss fights. There will be some time soon, but uh, this is definitely something we're going to want to explain. You betcha. <laughs> no problem. So you'll notice we have Goombario. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely different. I think I'll let you guys take this one. I need to make sure I hit all my blocks. Okay, yeah. so Junior Troopa in Chapter 8 has 60 HP, but once you bring Junior Troopa below 39 or 38 HP, I don't remember exactly which one, he starts transforming into different forms. So we're going to be using Mario's turn to deal some damage to bring him as close to that threshold as possible, and we upgraded Goombario so we can charge on Goombario's turn and give him plus 2 attack power. So what we're going to do is we're going to deal enough damage to get him low enough that we can wipe him out in one turn once Gumbario's done charging up here. Yeah, the main cause for concern is his first transformation makes him flying with a spike on his head and we can't jump on that because we don't have spike shield. So there's no way to deal damage to him besides doing Star Storm, which is really slow. Oh, don't worry. You'll see just how slow it is soon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, normally you'd be charging with Mario, but we didn't get Super Jump Charge, and also the caps on Power Bounce can impact the run a lot. Yeah, a lot of the riskier strategies usually involve Mario charging, but with some adjustments here with Goombario especially, having his own charge ability for 1 FP, is it? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm It's very, very efficient. Yeah, you can, for something like Junior Troopa, it's very convenient to just have Goombario available for this. Oops! Oh no, you missed the action command. <laughs> oh, no. oh no. Get ready for the screen to shake. That's so satisfying. 
So that untimed power jump, I missed the action command on purpose because uh, we needed to damage him to a very specific threshold of HP, and timing the action command would have caused him to transform. Fun little fact here, uh, while he's dazed there, uh, if you hold a direction on the control stick, he actually recovers from that and starts talking. <laughs> Please open the door. Uh, you had to show that up at least once. It's a yes, uh, run. I, I had such a good record of uh, not jumping in front of doors this run, but uh, alas, that has come to an end. <laughs> that one was off screen. That's not your fault. <laughs> well, and then it scrolled on screen and I kept doing it. <laughs> frame perfect, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing that is frame perfect. That's true. <laughs> Frame perfect oopsie. <laughs> so we're coming up on Hallway Bowser next. We might have time for like one or two donations while I get ready for that fight. Yeah, you bet it. We got a $10 donation from Tiff. This says, Dearest Tanner, I humbly apologize for the misguided and completely baseless claims that you are cringe. After minutes <laughs> of reflection, I've come to realize that you are an amazing obstacle, and I'm truly sorry for my attitude for the last 81 minutes. I appreciate all the times you've been there for me, even though you were there. Thank you, Tanner. Paper Mario. That, that is excellent. That's a great pasta. <laughs> Tiff's really good at those. I got another one here for you. You're really going to like this one. This is a $25 donation from Mom and Dad. It says, way to go, Mix4. Little did I know when I helped you mash that button in Paper Mario that you would get this far. Love you, Mom and Dad. Aww. Oh, thank you. I love you guys, too. <laughs> you got time for more? Nope, we are about All to right. find out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you'll get to see just how slow Star Storm is. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of them from here on out. Yep. It's our best way of dealing high single target consistent damage uh, for the end game in this scenario. So I am going to focus on this because I can't miss any action commands or I am dead. So let's not die. Yeah, so in terms of stats, Bowser isn't really the hardest enemy to, fe to defeat here. What's really annoying is his Star Shield gimmick. He's gonna pretty much spam it once he gets a hold of it. And there's not really much you can do about it besides using Star Beam to get rid of it. Yeah. And I believe he has a 25% chance of activating it and it keeps going up as the fight progresses until he does it again. And yeah, the, other the than the scripted one. On yeah. Two. Mm -hmm. It's 20 and then 30 and then he is guaranteed to do it on turn six. Uh, Thankfully, there is a chance that we will not see a second shield at all. The first one's going to happen now. Yeah, this one's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. He is scripted to always do this on turn two, which is unimaginably annoying when you're trying <laughs> to go fast because there's nothing you can do that isn't incredibly risky to stop him from doing this. It is worth noting on Hallway, he isn't actually invincible. Uh, in the Japanese version, he has five defense at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, on English, he would have four. They nerfed that for some reason. For some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could not tell you why, because... Everyone just thinks he's invincible anyway. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I definitely did. I, I star beamed during one of my first glitchless runs. <laughs> okay, good. Those are hard blocks. So we also picked up a badge earlier called Power Rush. That basically ups our damage by two when we're at five health or lower in danger. So we're going to be making use of that throughout the rest of the run to deal some extra damage when Star Storm isn't necessary. Oh no! Oh no. I died! Oh, no. Uh oh. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of life stream usage in the any percent categories for this game. So the reason I did nothing is because he is a heal threshold we're trying to avoid. Oh, he gave us a good fight. Wow, he did not feel well. That, that saves right. like a good 30 seconds on my PB or something. Because he always does that, and it loses a lot of time. But this should knock him out. And there he Very goes. Nice. 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 All right, we will have a little intermission between, uh, between phase one and phase two of final. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to need to focus. It is a very hard fight. It's likely the hardest fight that we do in uh, for Final Bowser in this game because of how long it is and how unforgiving it is. So yep. uh, we do have a backup save just in case. I hope I don't need it, but uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, head in now.
Yeah, the, the risky fights in the longer categories are usually only really a few turns. Uh, and this is, what, 11, 12? It's, yes. yeah. The average is 12. It can be longer yeah. uh, if he gives you triple shield. Yeah, for reference, even the risky fights in these shorter categories still average about 10 turns, 11 turns, depending on your RNG. Mm -hmm. So it's just long no matter what. Yep. Uh, but in any uh, any percent no ways, we get a lot of use out of Star Storm on the safe route. Uh, this route is like three or four minutes slower than the, the route that most players run at a top level. And it's usually just because of this fight here. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the vast majority of that time difference is in Final Bowser, and you can imagine why that makes it much more difficult, because you have to you have to keep your head on straight for a much longer period of time. And some of his attacks are very, very difficult to block. Mm -hmm. There are two of those. Uh, I'm going to focus. Uh, I don't need to yet, because phase, uh, phase one is uh, kind of just a story situation so uh but when we get there uh i am going to be very quiet for like five minutes straight so bowser has 99 hp and this is his first phase and you only get two chances to deal damage to him before he uses his star shield and unlike hallway your star beam can't actually do anything so we have to transition on to phase two so we want to deal as much damage as we can here since the damage you deal in Phase 1 carries over into Phase 2. Alright, so uh, we now have uh, we now have, what what is it, like three and a half minutes for donations? Yep. Something like <laughs> that? Yeah, something really the, long. The interlude between the phases is very long. So let's go ahead and uh, get some more if you have any. I have got so many here, I don't think I could possibly get through all of them. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, we, I, I want to remind everybody, we are, we are getting rapidly close to the end of this run. We don't have that much time left, and we have not yet made that glitch exhibition. We still need a little bit less than $3,500. We are so close, chat. We got to get this glitch exhibition going. Now, we could do this with a $5 train. However, Big Ray had a great idea. Instead of a $5 train, they said, with $64 donation, they said, let's get a $6.40 train going for N64. I covered 10, uh, 10 of you. Let's get some more for Paper Mario Glitch Expo. I agree. Let's get that going. Let's do a $6.40 train to get all the way to that $20,000 mark we have for that glitch exhibition. Uh, we got a $5 donation here from Gregor Monkey that says, one ticket for the cutest glitch exhibition train in town, Choo Woo Choo Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Cat Bomb sends in $150 that says, Gotta see those glitches. I don't want Paper Mario to end. I don't either. Let's make it happen. Uh, we got $22 from Dukel that says, Fun fact, prologue starts with the letter P. And P is the 22nd letter in the alphabet. And 22 minutes is about as long as the prologue adds to the beginning of our runs. That is true fate, true destiny, the stuff of legends. There is nothing I'd enjoy more than to watch 22-minute prologues for the rest of time. Thank you for your consideration. One up plus sends in five dollars with a comment. Hey Mix4, I don't have a meme to share like everyone else in this Goomba Forsaken Discord call does, but I do have to give <laughs> I do have my thanks to give. Thanks for a wonderful community, thanks for a great stream, and thanks for giving me one more online community where I can truly feel like myself. Good luck on everything now and in your future. I'll be busy being emotional over here. Don't mind me. Let's get these glitches going. Me too, Nikki, me too. <laughs> Aegis of the Grail sends in $5 with the comment, From Smash to Mario Party to Paper Mario, I've loved playing games with you and watching you stream. Love, love you and, your, and good luck with the rest of the run. Thank you so much. <laughs> I like this one from Anonymous. They send in $5 with the comment, Hey chat, who is your favorite Paper Mario partner? Tell me in a donation. For mine, I'll say Mini Yoshi. Whew. I thought they were going to say Perry Carry. <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been much funnier, that is true. <laughs> Yeah, Chad, send in, send in a $5 donation with your favorite character. All right, so here we're coming into phase two of final Bowser. This is the hardest fight in the game. Bowser is very predictable yet unpredictable at the same time, and he can cause a lot of problems. We are going to play around them. There's a lot to this fight. It's very long, and... Bowser is just so complicated. He can heal three times for 30 HP each time, and we need to be very careful to avoid that since that's something that is in our control. All right, let's wrap this up, guys. <laughs> Good luck. You got, you got this. You got this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, on top of the blocks being hard, 
if you happen to miss any of them, a lot of them have a bunch of gimmicks to them, or straight up kill you and take a life shroom, so it's really imperative that you hit all of these. Yeah, his claw there would do poison, which not too bad for a first attack, but getting poisoned later in the fight is a real big issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he also has a butt stomp attack, which if you miss that, you lose access to one of your three action commands being jump, hammer, or items. Hammer, ideally, if it happens, but... And then fire and lightning are just strong. Really strong. <laughs> yeah. That's unlucky. That loses like 15 seconds. <laughs> if he, if he uh. does claw and then stomp specifically on the first two turns, because uh, if you if you choose not to block claw turn one, you can do that, but it comes at a risk of him doing uh, fire on turn two and then shielding on turn three, and that ends your run. So we have to block claw on turn one. Unfortunately, that means another Star Storm, which we we do have allotted, but uh, it's just annoying because Star Storm is incredibly slow. <laughs> Not shielding there is really good. There's a 15% chance that he can shield early, and that makes it very complicated to back up. It's really slow, and in other routes that are risky, that ends your own. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now yeah. on because I had to do an extra Star Storm, that's one more damage than I would normally be doing, and this is a very tightly routed fight. So I need to do one less on purpose with Mombat. Cool. Yeah, the odds of him is. doing these Star Shields after the third turn on his cycles is 75% each time. So it's pretty likely that you're going to see this attack pretty often. Yep. He can do it two or three times over the course of this fight, and uh, it loses a lot of time every time he does it. So, But it's mostly unavoidable. The odds of him not doing it over the entire fight are, like, cosmically low. <laughs> nice. And, yeah, here's the most annoying attack of them all. That, if that <laughs> yeah, if that wave yeah. attack hits... Your partner, your partner is out of commission for three turns. Is it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would have been that would have been a death 100 percent of the time in that scenario. Every block in this game is a three frame window, except for that wave. You have three frames to block it with Mario, and you also technically have three frames to block it with your partner. But those frame windows overlap, and Mario's takes priority. So you really only have two frames to block it with your partner, and it is crucial to block with your partner. Yeah, we need that damage from Bombat. If we don't get that, that is incredibly bad. There are patterns where you can win if that happens, but it is so rare to get one of them. Oops. <laughs> Not wanting to eat that. <laughs> gel that they used earlier just a turn ago makes him invisible literally cannot be hit for him, for him anything which is pretty convenient for keeping this low health so bowser doesn't heal uh, he gave us another shield turn <laughs> <laughs> oh, mind if i jump like in real quick at the glitch exhibition we did in oh. fact meet the glitch exhibition Excellent. we made it to twenty thousand dollars everybody Awesome! I get to I get to have a few more minutes with you guys. This is great news. <laughs> Thank you all so much. And that is a perfectly executed fight. We win on no matter what on the next turn. Nice. <laughs> that this fight is terrifying. That it is, is so, so hard. scary. It is very <laughs> yeah. execution based. In every single Bowser fight in this game, your execution matters. You need to hit every single action command to give yourself a chance of winning. This fight requires so many of them. It is a gauntlet of a fight. And Skullar well takes the final blow. <laughs> Bowser goes down. <laughs> Now, you might be wondering, M4, why is the run not over yet? <laughs> uh, so there's about, uh, there's about six more minutes left in the run. It is about five and a half minutes of that are cutscene. Uh, but there is a small amount of movement at the end that we have to do. Uh, 
So we, we have a few more minutes to just, uh, I don't know, just talk about it. <laughs> Shoutouts to everybody, is especially the people I know that decided to drop in and donate during my run. Some of those messages had me, you know, wiping off tears. So thank you guys so much, <laughs> seriously. And uh, I know there are several people here today who flew out just to support me uh, after they found out that I got into GDQ. And I, I got to say, that means more than, than, than I can express with words. There's also a bid war, I believe. Yes, oh, yes, yeah. actually. This game. That is, is kind of important. That's yeah. true. <laughs> I almost forgot. I would have, uh, I probably would have just taken the pipe, you know, <laughs> if nobody said anything. We have, uh, we, we don't need to, to cut it yet, but uh, the Luigi skid, uh, the Luigi skid, <laughs> the Luigi skip uh, bid war uh, will be closing. Uh, I will let you know when. It'll be in about like maybe three or four minutes. I don't know exactly how long that blog is at this point. When you when you get to this point in a Paper Mario run, you you stop looking at the screen. You're just holding the B button and you're celebrating with everybody in your, in your chat <laughs> because uh, this game is extremely punishing at a top level in just about every conceivable way. The RNG is brutal. The difficulty in execution is extremely high. Uh, especially for certain parts like that clip I did outside uh, outside Bowser's castle. Uh, so, you know, you, you don't really worry about this. You just kind of keep an eye half on it while you wait for uh, while you wait for Luigi Skip to come up. But um, yeah, so I guess final shout outs. I think too many people, uh, <laughs> too many people, you know, donated and, and have supported me in my journey to to shout out, you know, in just a few words, but I will say uh, definite shout outs to the Paper Mario community. <laughs> they are wonderful people and have all supported me tremendously in my journey learning this game. I, I never thought, you know, when I picked up Glitchless of this game a few years ago that, uh, that I would ever, you know, actually end up running on the GDQ stage, uh, let alone a run as difficult as this one. <laughs> So uh, serious, serious shout outs to the Pape community for all of the resources they've put together, uh, to all of our glitch hunters as well. There, there are plenty of them. Uh, we have a lot of glitch hunters. We sure do. <laughs> yeah, we, do. We, we have a lot of glitch hunters for a very busted game. Uh, shout outs to everybody on my couch who decided to be here to support me today. Uh, <laughs> I ought to be honest, I was, I was kind of terrified coming into this, you know, first time doing uh, an in-person marathon and at GDQ of all places. Uh, but everyone, everyone here uh, supported me and we, we made it through, you know, to that point where it wasn't so scary anymore. <laughs> and of course, you know, shout outs to everyone who's still here in the audience at, you know, what, what, what is it now, 2, 3 a.m.? You guys are the best. <laughs> You know, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't be here doing this if it wasn't for you folks. <laughs> what about you guys? You got any words? Uh, well done. <laughs> you did really, really, really well. That was a really like, good Well run. underestimate. You, the tricks were clean, and uh, we're gonna be happy to explain uh, the glitch. Yes, the we yeah. we still have that upcoming seed dupe explanation. Thanks to you folks in the crowd and at watching at home. Uh, that's that's gonna be a doozy. <laughs> That's why I have three people here to help me with it. I <laughs> know yeah, you're running, having basically no encounters besides that Heimer brother. That's RNG. Yeah. Literally not your fault. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was like, well, that's really Sometimes hard to get. He does it. That's only happened like two or three times ever, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. That, that's rare. That's very, very rare. But you that, know, of course, it would happen on the stage, right? <laughs> that's, that's super rare on the way in. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Way more common on the way out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He has more time to move. Like he's loaded for longer while you can't move. Like when you're on your way out, so he's got more time to, you know, schmoove around, find the place that he thinks will screw you over the most. <laughs> that guy's on the list too, by the way. <laughs> oh, hey, it's Pear Kitty. Oh, hey. Oh, who's this wait, guy? Who? Wait, who? <laughs> who are you talking about? Oh, he looks like he found a letter. Oh, wait, yeah, he wow. did. Maybe he'll get his job back. Yeah, I, I guess that donation oh. message, uh, I guess maybe we didn't have so much to worry about. He's. Uh, he looks like he's back doing his job. I think we do actually need to know about Luigi right about now. Yes, we need to know about <laughs> Luigi. Uh, what won the bid war? At a score of $2,538 to $340, Party with <laughs> Luigi is the winner. All right. All right. Luigi's coming with us. <laughs>
So Luigi Skip saves like, what is it? Like, like eight seconds? Eight seconds, seconds yeah. something like that. It costs eight to 10 seconds to take him to the party, but the cost of skipping him is a broken heart. We can't do that to our <laughs> poor boy. It takes so much effort to hold down on the control stick. I'm putting it down. <laughs> Look, man, all I'm saying is I've forgotten to do this, all right? You can, you can do that on accident. <laughs> all right. So he goes on ahead of us. These are the last few sections of movement in the run. Yep. Uh, time will come up when Peach raises her hands during the uh, during the speech at the end of the game. There you go. We'll final input is holding the B button. <laughs> yep, time is when Peach puts her hands up after the final text box. I'll go ahead and call it out as well. Time. Time. 143 collection? Yeah. Yep. 143. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys want to know something? Before Seed Dupe was found, the fastest ever safe route run was a 145. Like a 145.59 or something like that. So to see a time like this at a marathon is really wild. I, I, I can't believe I did it. <laughs> Well done. Unbelievable run. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well done. So. Alrighty, well, while we get that glitch exhibition set up, I do have a few more donations to read. We got a $50 donation here from Paddle. It says, hey, GDQ, great to see you all back as a live event with a great audience. I gladly donate some money as two great things come together here, video games and charity. Keep going fast. All the very best from Germany. We got a $64 donation here from Jesse Lockhart that says, this has been a very entertaining Paper Mario run. Mix 4 has been killing it. My favorite Paper Mario partner would be Goombella. $50 comes in from Shark of the Day that says, my favorite partner is Vivian. Her entire story is about self-acceptance, personal growth, and finding people who love her for who she is. And that is a wonderful message, isn't it? $25, $25 comes in from Mystic Hera that says, My boyfriend and I are matching donations whenever the other has an investment, any prize or incentive. We love GDQ. Well, we love you too. Thank you very much for your donation. $5 comes in from Mr. Steal Your Gill with a comment, Oh, this is why you haven't finished your rando tournament. I see how it is. Amazing run mix. You did amazing. Alrighty, and as I understand it, we are ready to uh, begin the Glitch Exhibition. So everybody, put your hands back together for Mix 4 and the Glitch Exhibition of Paper Mario! Hi! So, uh, did you guys miss me? I know I was gone for a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, to take this from the top, uh, I know we touched on this a little bit during the run itself, but uh, this is uh, getting... Toad Town Sushi Glitch, which is what we call it, was a bit of a white whale in the Paper Mario community for many years. There, uh, we didn't know how to do it. The only example that was ever done uh, by a reputable uh, glitch hunter was off recording, and uh, we, we just didn't know what was up. And there's a very, very good reason for that. So you'll notice that uh, this setup involves walking into the corner of this dock, walking back here, and then tapping down for a frame. So that's all I did. Now, notice when I press C down, nothing happens. Now, the reason that nothing happened just now is because the, uh, we need Mario to have a very specific internal direction, uh, which we didn't even know was a variable for like a very long time. But he has an internal direction that is set to uh, the last direction he walked in, basically. And there is a way to set that without moving. Otherwise, this would be nearly impossible. So what I'm going to do right now, still pressing C down, you can see nothing's happening. So I'm going to spin and I'm going to hold down left and I'm going to hammer. And there we go. So <laughs> we need the angle 
the internal angle to be facing down left specifically. And the reason that this works is because uh, I, I don't know the, the full details, but I know that the internal angle is important and the distance from Mario, uh, Mario to the dock, uh, to the end of the dock is also important. So what's happening is that the game's getting a little confused because we're not actually close enough to the dock, but due to Mario's internal angle and the space between you know, him and the end of the dock that way, uh, the game gets confused and it wants to put Mario on sushi, but it can't do that up because we're too far from the, the up left side of the dock and it can't do that down because we're too far from the down left side of the dock. But because of Mario's internal angle, the game looks down left and sees that, and it, for whatever reason, it thinks we're close enough to do that. So that's the first step. And this, this was really a legendary find. Uh, and we, you know, it really rocks the Paper Mario community when we found that we could do this at all, you know. This opened so many doors and so many people started working on what we can do with this. Mm -hmm. So when we have Sushi Glitch here, we can actually go anywhere we want that is accessible. I don't think we can go through that door because that's a door and not a loading zone, but we could... Uh, we can come around here, frolic with the townsfolk. We can uh, <laughs> we can take this loading zone, uh, go to chapter one, and uh, we can go as far as Cooper Bros. Fortress, I believe, like this. Uh, and fun fact, you can just dive out of bounds. Sushi's <laughs> got some interesting properties going on. Uh, we can also just leave. You guys want to, I, I, you know, I, I'm interested, you know, more so in what's out there, you know. Maybe if we swim for long enough, we can get somewhere else. So you can go far enough to just leave the screen entirely uh, and exist in an endless void of the background, uh, if you would like. I don't know why, but you can do it, you know? <laughs> I'm not here to judge. So uh, anyway, you can go all the way back to the Goomba Bros, uh, the, sorry, uh, the Goomba Village, if you want to. You can go to chapter one. You can go to West Toad Town. You can go to chapter three. And chapter three is where the magic happens because this interacts with several other glitches in a way that lets us skip chapter five entirely. Now, before, uh, before seed duping was found, uh, the any percent no ace route uh, went through the volcano after arriving in chapter five, uh, and it did not get sushi. With this find, going and picking up sushi, returning to Toad Town and doing this suddenly became faster than completing chapter five as intended. <laughs> Uh, because there are a lot of tricks in there. And it also made Paracarry optional because the only known required use of him uh, was for a trick in, uh, was now for a trick in Chapter 8 that has an alternative that uh, I think a lot of people probably just thought was TAS only for a long time as well. Turns out there is a setup, it's just very hard. Um, I probably won't go into the details of why that works. I think my couch did it while I was <laughs> focused. Uh, but suffice to say, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, hardest thing we do in the run by a landslide. Anyway, so here's our friend. I can't believe we haven't named him yet. Uh, <laughs> the fact that this guy and the bubble that gives you a magical seed are on the screen, or on the same screen, is the only reason why this works. So what we're gonna do here, uh, the next step is to touch this guy. And we're gonna run away from that fight. It's a little difficult to run away from. So now, uh, things have changed a little bit. You'll see how, one, the fuzzy is not seeing us, despite us uh, being right here. Uh, the game, part of the game still thinks we're on sushi due to the, the player flags that Mario has. Now we can move, we can jump around, uh, we can get glared at by a tree, uh, but there are a lot of things we can't do. In this state, we can't pause. If you hear that noise, that's the noise the game makes uh, when you're on sushi because you can't pull up the pause menu when you're doing that. Uh, and also, here's something funny. The hammer animation doesn't work anymore. I have no idea why. It just does not work. So you might think this is a soft lock, but actually, if I press the B button again, it is hammering with no animation. <laughs> you can actually encounter this guy again. Let me see if I can get him to jump into it. Hey, come on. Get over here. Come back. There we go. Nice. So you, you can first strike him with no animation whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, I think there's also a trick, uh, also something you can do where if you're holding a direction when you enter a fight in this state, the camera actually shifts in that direction for some reason. I, I forgot to do it on this encounter, and if I, if I did a third one, it'd softlock, so I'm not going <laughs> to do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, so what we do here is we want to cancel Sushi Glitch. We've achieved the correct flags that we want Mario to have in order to make this work. So I'm going to switch to Bombette. 
uh, with my partner's turn to cancel Sushi Glitch, and I'm going to run away again. Now, things are a little different this time. You know, normally there's an animation, and you can't run away immediately, uh, or you can't, like, move immediately, but now we can. And uh, you might remember earlier when we got the Ultra Boots that there's a state called Clippy that we get into. This also gives you Clippy. And uh, a good, uh, we didn't really touch on it that much while we were doing it because it went fast and it's really hard, but uh, Clippy actually halves the size of Mario's hitbox because the game, for some reason, still thinks that we're riding either Sushi or Lackluster. So uh, because of that, only half of Mario's hitbox is present and you can do silly things like this. Walk through solid collision, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have to hold very specific angles on the stick to do this, but it's just one example of many as to why this state is extremely broken. <laughs> uh, this is also a state where if you get another encounter, um, if you get like first struck or something, uh, there are a lot of soft lock situations, so we have to be very careful with this. Now you'll notice that there's no exclamation point here in front of this gate. Watch this. Notice how when I pause and unpause the game, the exclamation point appears for a very brief period, and we can actually use that to do this. To do that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> to do that, yeah. This is harder than it looks, I promise. <laughs> I think I'm going, I think I'm trying to go a little too early, because if you yeah. go too late, it's soft locks, so I'm just playing it safe. Makes sense, yeah. There we go. Goodbye. So this saves about three <laughs> seconds if you fall through the floor. <laughs> Obviously, as you can see, it took me like 20 tries, so that wasn't <laughs> really faster. Uh, it is faster optimally, and it lands you in the perfect position to do the next part of the trick, which is talk to this bubble. And you might notice there's no speech bubble, but do not let that fool you. You can talk to him, and it soft locks you, so don't do that. <laughs> uh, Another, uh, the way that we can make this work is another pause-unpause situation. Uh, the, ex uh, the speech bubble doesn't end up appearing on this one. Uh, there are still a lot of mysteries uh, related to why this happens. But if you do this correctly, you can talk to him. And now we have access to movement in the middle of talking to an NPC, which is an extremely broken state. So now we can move around. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the fuzzy is frozen in time. <laughs> he, uh, he can't do anything. He can, like, turn around to look at you, but he is stuck in midair. Uh, I'm not sure if we can encounter him, and I don't particularly feel like finding out because of the soft locks. <laughs> so let me go ahead and find my place again. So from here, uh, what we want to do is we want to go to a screen where we can return immediately. So we want to get over here to the gate. And because I already moved through this gate when I was cheating like a filthy cheater, uh, we, it just lets us in. Uh, normally, it, it would put you towards the center of the map on your first interaction. So here we are. Uh, we have this text bubble open. We're next to a loading zone. And we're talking to the bubble, who uh, must be having trouble hearing us by now. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll this text until we get the magical seed. And we can move while doing this. Mario, you know, he does a little praise the sun situation there. <laughs> so what we want to do now is we hit the loading zone. And what that does is it interrupts the scripting with the bubble. Uh, there are actually two different distinct points in, uh, in the bubble's scripting. The first, uh, the first one is when he gives you the magical seed and it pops up in your inventory. As you can see, we have the blue seed. It's right here. The second one is uh, what happens when the conversation ends. He will stop talking to you and then he'll resume his status as like an NPC that has been spoken to and already given you his item. But since we interrupted that scripting with a loading zone, we can talk to him again. And this gives us a second copy of the Forever Forest Magical Seed. Now, there's a, you, you wouldn't think that would do much because you need four seeds to open the gate. But that is actually sort of kind of a half-truth. <laughs> this was something that was theorized by Jaycog for a long time, but if you somehow got another magical seed, uh, the game's scripting when you attempt to plant them only checks for three unique seeds uh, to be planted, and then the fourth one could be any seed. It doesn't matter what the fourth one is. It's just that the first three have to be from different places. So by interrupting the bubble scripting to get him a, uh, to give us a second seed, 
Uh, he allows us to trick Minty into opening the flower gate without having all four flowers planted. And uh, this, as a result, saves a tremendous amount of time in every single category. Uh, and this is this discovery is very new, January of this year, actually. So right before you know, right before we were doing our submissions, uh, all, you know, everything just changed all of a sudden. I remember getting the uh, getting the message that we didn't have to beat Chapter Five anymore, and I was at work uh, at the hospital when I, and I started writing down a new route on my phone using sticky notes because I wanted to run it immediately when I got home. <laughs> so here we are at the flower gates here. Uh, there are some consequences to this. Skipping chapter five does not come easily. <laughs> so the primary one, and I'm going to go ahead and reset uh, for Clippy Boots again. The primary one is that we no longer get the Ultra Hammer. Uh, this is bad. <laughs> it means that we cannot, uh, we don't have any hammer upgrades at all. So we have the normal hammer, and that is incapable of breaking the blocks, uh, leading to the ultra boots, which we do need 100%. I forgot. <laughs> forgot the door wouldn't be open on that file. So uh, we're going to head down. Well, I guess I could use Lackey. I have to use Lackey. Excuse me. <laughs> no, I don't think you have Lackey on this file since chapter six wasn't open. Uh, okay, so did I... <laughs> Let me check the other one. <laughs> yeah, it should be top right. Yeah, okay. Lucky. There he is. There's our boy. Okay, so <laughs> really quick, uh, we got to exit Flower Fields and get back there. Um, I forgot which save file was which. Excuse me. <laughs> So now we'll go ahead and go back into the sewers. Uh, we already explained that this is a frame perfect trick. Uh, it is very hard <laughs> to do with any level of consistency and it's very punishing if you fail it. Uh, not that one. That one doesn't matter if you fail it. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the sewers. The biggest consequence is that we don't have the ultra hammer anymore. So the ultra boots require a double clippy situation in order to get them, which is extremely hard. Uh, not something anyone wanted to do. Like it would have saved time in the past, uh, even with the other route, uh, because it would just be skipping the ultra hammer. Uh, but still nobody did it because it was the, the ratio of difficulty to benefit was just way too small. So. So we're gonna try to, basically it's the frame perfect encounters that I showed you guys earlier. And uh, I'll just, I'll go ahead and uh, go over to the second one really quick. Oh, the third one, I guess. Okay. So I may, uh, I may not get this right away. Uh, but basically, we get the clippy state that we talked about in the forest again. And we use that to cheat our way inside that block. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind, this is still frame perfect and specifically the second frame of initiating the encounter. So it's not up on, it's not up on the first possible frame of starting the battle, which is makes the timing a little awkward. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, the trick is very similar in both rooms. Uh, this is about the end of the exhibition, but basically you just kind of get in here and then you walk over on the other side. And the other one is very similar to that. Uh, it's got a little bit of stick movement that's a little difficult, but you know that's not too important to the overall function of the trick. So yeah, that's about all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> Yeah, so serious uh, shout outs to everyone who got me this far, especially my couch who have been uh, letting me do all the blabbing for the most part. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, everyone who donated, everyone who, you, you know, everyone who supported me on this journey and especially the GDQ community uh, and committee for games, thank you guys so much for giving me the chance to do this. It, it means a lot. <laughs> Everybody give it up one more time for Mix 4 with that awesome Paper Mario run. Great job. That was incredible. And the donation that put us over the limit to make that glitch exhibition happen was a $3,500 donation from Anonymous. 
No comment, no problem at all. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for that donation. That gave us the glitch exhibition. And with that, we are going to take a quick break, hydrate, stretch your legs, do what you got to do. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2023, powered by Twitch. And now, a little bit from the people that made this event happen. This is the GDQ Hotfix, Games Done Quick's diverse roster of shows that deliver a flavor of speedrunning for everyone. But they do. Oh, yeah, I forget. Here's like real gaming right here. What is this RNG? So we shoot here, we shoot here, grapple here, you shoot here. You Oh, there we go, there we go, okay. Um, yeah. It has Voltaxx! <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the, the uh... duffel bag Ashley skip. We got a PB! Catch our streams every day on twitch.tv slash games done quick. 
Mark your calendars. Frame Fatale's 2023 GDQ's next all-women charity speedrunning event is coming up August 13th through 20th. The Frame Fatales community will be raising money for charity and spotlighting the talented women in speedrunning. Volunteer applications will be opening on June 6th. For more information about Frame Fatales, go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales or type exclamation point FF in the chat. If you're a woman interested in joining the FF community, DM at Frame Fatales on Twitter or head to our website. We have a $50 donation from Clotis that says, donate for more GDQ and great prizes? Yes, chef, no, I mean sent. <laughs> and with that, we are going to kick it over to an interview with our wonderful interview team.